let's start by talking about Waxworks, which is easily the most disturbing promo <laughs> you guys have ever yeah. released. And anytime I showed someone that, I just, people were, you know, gagging or like, <laughs> like I, I had a couple people telling me I'm a sick person and, you know, it's just like. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to The Haunt Line, the show dedicated to SoCal haunts and events. I'm excited for today's episode because we're going to be talking to a very good friend of mine who uh, is a talented filmmaker and the video designer at Knott's Berry Farm. And he's behind a lot of content for both Knott's Berry Farm, but also Knott's Scary Farm, specifically uh, those maze trailers that we all love and also a lot of the in maze content itself. So we're going to dive deep and talk all about it with him. But before we get to that and in the spirit of this week's holiday, I want to say thank you to everybody who has supported this channel, both as a collaborator and especially as a part of the audience. And man, let me tell you, uh, this has been such a fun experience for me. I've had a blast putting together these, these episodes for you. I've had a blast creating this content for all of you to enjoy. And although this channel hasn't been around for very long, uh, the response this season was incredible, uh, especially given the fact that we didn't have any of the major events that we usually have. So I want to say once again, thank you to everybody uh, for watching, for commenting, for following, for subscribing, uh, for interacting with the content. This year has definitely been very interesting interesting, especially for myself and my colleagues in the live entertainment industry. Uh, I work in concerts, I do live sound, uh, and I work behind the scenes as well. And let me tell you, it's been uh, a whirlwind of a year. So I want to thank you guys for uh, supporting the channel. This has been a great outlet for me to keep my mind off of uh, just the, the madness. And uh, I hope that I could do that for you as well. So once again, uh, sincerely, everyone, thank you so much for your support. It means the world to me. And uh, the channel's going to keep growing. It's going to keep going. Uh, we're going to have a lot more fun, haunt-related content coming your way. And with that, let's get to our episode. Today's guest is the video designer at Knott's Berry Farm, and he has been creating video content for them since 2015. Please welcome to the show my friend, Jared Almond. Hey. What's <laughs> hey, up, man? man. Uh, so thank you for coming on the show, brother. I'm really excited to talk about all, all things, uh, not Scary Farm specifically, because you've created a lot of awesome content for them, namely lots of promos for mazes and scare zones. But before we uh, dig into that, outside of not Scary Farm, uh, you write and create horror films. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it about horror that appeals to you? I think I think multiple things. You know, I think for most people, it's the thrill of it, right? Like right. there's a thrill to uh being scared yet knowing uh it's nothing is really going to harm you you know uh truly you know some people i guess get nightmares and whatnot when they watch horror films but um so i guess that in a way is kind of harming someone but yeah uh really it's it doesn't truly affect you but you still get that thrill and i think that's uh that's something I don't know. I don't know what it is in the human psyche, but I think that's the thing that a lot of people uh, enjoy when they're watching horror. So that's one main thing. Um, another thing I really like about horror is uh, with good horror throughout history, you can <clears throat> be more subtle as a storyteller in uh, telling telling tales or making observations on society. Uh, and um, what's kind of going on um, socially and politically right. uh, without, without being too heavy handed and it's still exciting. Right. So uh, that's that's uh, that's something I think you can do with good horror. Nice, man. It was so funny, too, man. For those for those of you who don't know, Jared, you're like one of the chillest guys you can ever <laughs> meet. And you make some really, truly terrifying things, dude. It always cracks me up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few people in my basement tied up. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Yeah, just yeah. a few, though. Just a few. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still kind of normal. You, hey, you, shut up down there. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them we're recording. How rude. Uh, let's talk about Not Scary Farm, because uh, as a let's fan talk. of the event, and uh, you know, I'm speaking for all fans right now, and I think it's safe to say that we all truly enjoy 
the maze reveals, the maze trailers, the scare zone trailers. Uh, nothing gets us more pumped than watching those clips, uh, whether it be on the announcement event or on YouTube or whatever. But what I don't think people realize is that a lot of the content that is made for Not Scary Farm is made in-house, on-farm. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about what it's like to work uh, in this field at Not Scary Farm? Um, well, first off, to me, I have the best job in the world there. Totally. Um, <laughs> just because I get to I get to work with all aspects, you know, I get to I get to work uh, behind the scenes. I get to work with the scare actors. I, you know, we get to uh, work on the concepts of stuff. You know, it's just it's I'm I, I'm there from the very beginning of uh, concepts and, and nice. ideas and stuff. So um, uh, being the video designer, there's a lot of aspects in mazes nowadays uh, that uh, require video content. So it's it's just nice and 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 fun to be able to be there through development, you right? Know? So now uh, I don't think a lot of people realize it, but there is a full on production studio at uh, mm -hmm. Knotts. Uh, could you tell us a little more about that? Yeah. So um, most people probably are from, you know Haunt fans are probably are familiar with uh, the Elvira show. So that theater that the Elvira show was in, there is a studio back behind that theater or it's it's in the same building but it's it's kind of behind the theater it's a you know it's a small little intimate space but you know we have we have a recording studio suite in there and uh we have all of our equipment in there as far as multimedia and we have uh editing bays for for video work and you know all all that good stuff back there so that's that's basically the heart of of where we produce all this stuff. Man, it's so cool, dude. I, I wish people could see it because uh, it really is truly a magical place and so much comes out of that, whether a it be yeah, like <laughs> so much, yeah. whether it be uh, video content or audio content for the park. I mean, you guys are yeah. working, man. You guys are constantly working and it's awesome. It's an awesome space. And now Haunt is obviously a collaborative effort. Uh, now, when it comes to the actual promos themselves, how much input do the maze designers usually have in those promos? It is, it, it's 50, 50, you know, or, or it's just, it's a completely collaborative process. If there was ever a time where someone approached me and I didn't feel collaborative mm. or I didn't feel, um, I just wasn't interested in something or something like that, it just wouldn't work, you know? Right. So that, that has never happened. So what usually happens is, you know, it'll be, Sometimes it, it's it'll be haunt of the year before, if that makes any sense, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, I'll get approached with the concept, and uh, from there we work up until about March, kind of developing it. Wow. And then we start shooting stuff. So it's always like a, a like daily, week to week. I'll get an idea. I'll go to their their office. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Oh, cool. Yeah. And then, you know, they'll expand on that. And, you know, it's just, you know, for for uh, if we're speaking specifically about like the promo stuff, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of work and collaboration for, you know, about two minutes of footage. <laughs> <laughs> so but uh, but like you said, you know, it's the it's it's kind of the first thing a lot of people see when they get the information of of what we're going to be doing that year. Yeah. So it's it's pretty important to get our vision across um, concisely in a video like that. So, you know, we spend a lot of time thinking about that stuff and developing it. Yeah, nice. All right, uh, now let's talk about last year's trailers because you guys released two trailers, two promos that were epic uh, and they were epic mazes, so it, it's fitting. Uh, let's start by talking about Waxworks, which is easily the most disturbing promo <laughs> you guys have ever yeah. released uh i mean w wow uh in fact uh let's play the tr let's play the promo right now here you go Oh, my God. 
Disturbing, disturbing. And it's mostly the sound design that is just, ah, uh, it just uh, it gets yeah. to me every single time. Uh, talk to me about what it was like creating that for you. Because obviously we watch it for two minutes, uh, but you're creating this thing over weeks, months maybe. Uh, what was it like putting this uh, trailer together? Well, first off, that one uh, was over a year. Oh, wow. Or a year, year and a half because we actually... We're supposed to be doing that in 2018 or thought we were going to be doing it in 2018. We, we didn't shoot any of it back then, but we started developing it back then. And it, it changed a bit uh, throughout that year or so. But um, yeah, as far as as far as the sound design, um, I'll touch on that. Uh, yeah. Normally, normally I like to go, you know, a little bit more. I wouldn't say subtle, but, you know, just a little bit more. We'll just say blended in. Sure. Uh, but for this, since it's that whole POV shot, you know, you're, you're looking from the eyes of the, of the victim. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I figured it would just make it all the more, it wouldn't be too over the top. Um, if we just made it more creepy by making those sounds just, uh, prevalent, you know, that I just, I went crazy with that on, on, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, you did. (laughs) And, and, you know, I was I was expecting someone, you know, it's, you know, uh, bosses or somebody to be like, hey, you know, you think you can tone that down a bit? <laughs> it's a it's it's a little bit much. But, you no, know, no one. Everyone was just like any time I showed someone, you know, a rough cut or, uh, you know, whatever uh, the, the non finished version, anytime I showed someone that. I just, people were, you know, gagging or like, <laughs> like just had, had a grimace on their face the whole time or just like, you know, shaking their head, you know, yuck, you know, yeah. just, uh, so, you know, I, I saw that it did its job. So, yeah, um, uh, yuck is right, man. <laughs> yeah. I, so- I had a couple people telling me I'm sick person and, <laughs> you know, it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> so so this maze is obviously born from the twisted mind of uh daniel miller uh yeah. did you guys talk at all about the trailer and about uh w- what you guys wanted for that oh yeah we daniel and i um not only you know uh do we work together but we pretty much just we're buddies about anything that has to do with like creative stuff so we nice um, talk a lot about film in general. So, you know, the whole year, basically we were just kind of just talking ideas about that whole thing. So yeah, like I was saying before, it's, it's, it's a 50, 50 collaboration, you know, everything that came out of that was uh, story-wise was pretty much both of us just kind of, you know, sitting down and going back and forth, like, Hey, what, what would be the best for this? What would be the best for that? So Nice, man. And, and how yeah. did the idea for that first person shot uh, come up? I, I wanted there to be mystery of what was going on. Uh, so you're seeing something. Something is happening all ar- like literally right around you as the viewer. And you don't know what's going on. You just know it's really messed up. 
right? <laughs> so, yeah. and I, th- I, I think that comes from the, just the idea of the maze is, is uh, people are getting put into these, these masterpieces, these, these wax sculptures. It's, yeah, it's just basically feeding off of Daniel's concept for, for, those, for those masterpieces is, you know, just kind of waking up and, you know, not knowing what the heck is going on and yeah. being turned into one of those. Oh, yeah, truly, truly twisted. And that that maze, honestly, is gorgeous. I loved going through yeah. it. I can't wait to go back through it again. Uh, you guys did an excellent job. And now this is kind of an obscure question, but there's a couple of shots of bees in there. Uh, is that something that you guys found or did you actually go out and shoot that? Yeah, we actually <laughs> we went out and shot that. Uh, nice. There's there's a well, first off, this idea, it was Eric Nix. Eric Nix is uh, one of the producers over at the farm. Okay. And uh, this was his idea. I showed him the the a rough cut of it. Okay. And he's like, he looks at it, you know, and he's like, you know, like I was saying, people are like, oh my god, this is gross and whatnot. <laughs> but then at the at the very end, he's like, wouldn't that be cool if there was bees in there, just like <laughs> sporadic? And I was like, you're right. So uh, at Knotts, we have this, uh, this thing called Boysenberry Festival, which is the spring season festival. And there's a vendor, uh, there, there's a bunch of vendors during the festival that come and uh, sell their stuff in, the, in uh, Ghost Town. And uh, one of the vendors there is a bee farmer. Really? Yeah. So, uh, so he, you know, they, they get honey and whatnot. So <laughs> we were like, hey let's go talk to that guy and see if we can go film some of his bees. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a whole nother crazy, creepy story because we're out in the like woodsy area. Ooh. It was, it was really, it was, it was, it would have made a good movie, but, oh, uh, man. uh, we'll save that story for another time. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we went out and we captured some of his bees and we actually used those bees, uh, footage of the, those bees, in the maze as well. Oh, wow. There's a, a sculpture of a woman that's just covered in like honeycomb and there's bees all over her. Uh, those bee, the, the bees that you see swarming all over her, that's that's the same uh, footage of bees. Wow, that's incredible, dude. That That's freaking awesome. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's some of the stuff we end up doing, it's... <laughs> It's crazy. Now let's uh, let's talk about origins, the curse of Calico. In fact, uh, let's check out the trailer. Here it goes. You are hereby charged with the crimes that have befallen our good town of Calico. You've been found guilty of burning down the barn at the East Fork Road. Guilty for the slaughter and mutilation of livestock at Boom Ranch. Guilty for conjuring the storm that led to the disappearance of four children. Guilty for the seduction of the menfolk of this town. (coughs) And guilty for the bloodletting and murder of 13 citizens. It is the judgment of the citizens of this town, and by order of the powers invested in me, that you are hereby found guilty of witchcraft and sentenced to be hanged from the neck until dead. Sarah Marshall, do you have any final words? What an epic trailer, dude. This thing gets me every single time I watch it, bro. It's a good one. A masterpiece. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Thank you. Yeah, great job on this one. (laughs) Uh, The trailer is super simple, and yet it is highly effective. 
Uh, what was the inspiration behind its visual style? Okay, so to start off with, uh, Ted Doherty, who is like, you know, Hunt Encyclopedia. Totally. You know, just like, uh, he's he's been involved with everything. Um, he developed that maze with uh, John Cook. Yeah. And Dream team. Dream team. Yeah. Really. <laughs> a great, a great team there. And um, so he, he approached me. He was like, hey, I have, I have a script, you know, that I want you to consider for, for this promo, you know, you can add to it or whatever and, and, and whatnot. Uh, so I just looked at it and I'm like, Phew. I'm like, this thing is pretty much solid, good to go. You know, there's, there's just a few kind of, you know, a few things I added, but as far as the visual style to it, you know, we wanted it to seem as, as bleak and, you know, just kind of grimy as the as the story is you know the yeah. the, the the ghost town story so uh going with that just complete black abyss behind these kind of um uh just dirty grimy townsfolk and <laughs> you know um having that you know firelight on them yeah to to you know it, it gives it like a, a primal feel like as if they're these people are, you know, out in the woods yeah. doing some weird, evil stuff. So, um, yeah, just it, it, it was the, the visual style was, uh, was based in, you know, what the style and tone of the maze is. So nice. Yeah. And it definitely captured it, man. And I love the mix of like the warm tone of the fire with like the, the cold blue of the night. Um, it really yeah. it, it made for a very interesting clash on each of the, mm -hmm. the townspeople. And I also love the way that it cut from, you know, the, the lawman's very, very passionate speech, which, by the way, stellar performance from him. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, he that carried is, that's, that. That is Mark Norwood, and I will never not work with him if I have a chance to. <laughs> <laughs> if, if that made any sense. Never yeah, not to work. Totally, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. I totally get I what mean, you mean. Yeah. Oh. He's he's just amazing and really everything about that that promo was just perfect things coming together. And uh, I, I, you know, immediately when I read that script, I was like, Mark's got to do this. And <laughs> and of course, you know, he killed it. So absolutely, man. So Ted wrote all that dialogue then. Yeah, Ted wrote the dialogue. Wow. Nice, yeah. man. Yeah, mm -hmm. honestly, yeah. Talk about two worlds coming together perfectly. Yeah, man. That dialogue meeting his performance, mm -hmm. stellar. Absolutely stellar. And now the, the final shot, uh, well, one of the final shots is this beautiful, beautiful truck from behind the citizens over to Sarah Marshall on the horse about to get mm -hmm. uh, hung. Uh, I think it's probably the only not scary farm promo to feature like a real animal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was that like, man? Uh, well, it was, it was a process. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we were, we, we were having a, a production meeting one day, uh, during, during, you know, coming up with a concept and whatnot. And we're, we're like, well, how are we going to hang her? You know, what are we going to do to hang her? Yeah. And we were like, well, we can bring out the gallows and we're like, uh, I don't know if we can bring out the gallows for this. That's like a big, you know, the, the gallows that we use for, uh, for the hanging. Sorry. Right. Uh, there, there's a show that we do at, at not scary farm called the hanging. And there's these giant gallows like, uh, that, that, that just wouldn't work because the angle would be all weird. And, you know, and we, we want to fit it into boot Hill cemetery and it just wouldn't work. Yeah. Uh, we shot that in boot Hill cemetery that, that shot just, uh, if you didn't know. So, which is perfect, perfect. The tie oh, yeah, in. it's yeah. We wanted to uh, you know tie it in with you entering the maze, so um, or entering the queue line. Uh, so we're like, you know, that's not going to work. And I had just seen, I don't know if you remember the movie or uh, saw the movie, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. No, I haven't. Seen it. It's on the. It's on my list, but I oh, got to check it out. Okay. Well, there's a there's a. Uh, I don't want to ruin it for you, but there's a point in there where that's about to happen to someone. You know, okay. they're, 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 they're sitting on a horse tied to a tree. Dang. I, I know, I, I know I, I had, uh, seen that before somewhere maybe, I, but 
that just clicked when we were having that meeting, like how are we gonna hang her? So I was like, can we use one of the horses? Cause we have horses that, that are on a stagecoach ride yeah. at, at Knott's. So I'm like, can we use one of the horses? And everyone in, around the table is like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, we don't have any trees in in um, Boot Hill Cemetery either. That's right. So we actually ended up using one of the fabricated trees that were in Voodoo. Oh no way! The, the, the Voodoo maze, yeah. <laughs> so we we you know we we keep all of our stuff. We repurpose it a lot, and you know it, it works out a lot. Totally. So uh, we, we moved one of those trees in there and then we went through about a like a month or two process of getting the horse because we had to like, first of all, we had to, you know, pitch it to the the rides team because they're in charge of the horses and we had to, you know, ensure them that we weren't going to be doing anything that, you know, would be, would, you know, spook the horses or 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 anything like that. So it was just, there's a, there's a lot that went to it. So there's all of that. And then finally we get out there the night of, and, uh, Phil is not really wanting to cooperate. Oh no. <laughs> so they're having to do all this stuff to appease the horse. And, you know, long story short, we got, we got the, the shot we needed. See, this is what people don't, don't realize how, how like how much work it like for just a couple of seconds, man. Yeah. But look, look at all you had to do. It's <laughs> yeah. crazy. But it, you know, it, like I, I got to a point where I'm like, we have to have this horse, you know, totally. I don't know if it's subconscious or what, but it is, it is, it's just super effective on, on selling the gruesome nature of what they're going to do to her. I feel like, you know, absolutely. Uh, so yeah. And I'm out there when, when the horse was, was acting up and I'm like sweating, you know, I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God, like, what are we going to do? Cause it's, you know, it's probably 1 AM at this point Dang. because we have to shoot this stuff when the park is closed, you know? Yeah. And it's summertime, usually when we're shooting this stuff. Yeah. So, he, you know, park closed at 10. You got to wait for everyone to clear. You got to set everything up. You know, it's it's about 1 a.m. at this point. And I'm like, wow, what are we going to do? And uh, I'm, 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 I'm thinking, you know, someone's going to have to go get an old looking chair. And we're just going to have to stand her up on a chair under this tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> and someone's going to have to kick the legs out under it, you know. Right. But, uh no, we, we got what we needed. So. Nice. And it worked perfectly, man. Again, such a beautiful trailer. Gorgeous trailer. I love it. And well, now that we're on the topic, uh, I would definitely love to learn a little bit more about all the video content that went into Origins itself, the maze, because, man, there was a lot of it. Uh, what was it yeah. like creating all that for the maze? <laughs> well, first off, I got uh, Johnny, John Cook's um, video list, you know, of what he would like to have in the maze. Yeah. And I almost had a heart attack <laughs> because, and, and, and John, he's always good for that. You know, he's always good for, uh, raising the bar. Totally. You know? Absolutely. So yeah. It puts a lot of work on my plate, but it's fun stuff and challenging. So after, you know, taking a, a couple looks at the list and I'm like, you know what, we can do this. We can swing this because, you know, obviously it's not just one maze, you know, that we're having to come up right. with stuff for, you know, yeah. it's, it's the new mazes. And on top of that, it's any upgrades that we might be doing to any other mazes, you know? Right. So there's a lot of stuff that's coming down the pike in that time of year. And, um, we don't have a huge team. We don't have a big team, you know, <laughs> we, have a, we have a, we don't have a normal size team. We have a small team. <laughs> so, and, and usually the, the maze designers, they come to me with these lists, not as a, you know, I, I, I have to have this or whatever. It's more of like an ask, like, Hey, can we do these things? So as I looked at his list, I'm like, there's nothing that I, I want to not do on here. You know, there's not, I, I want to do all of it. So we made it happen um, with the short amount of time and people, you know, resources that we had. Nice. Um, yeah, I don't, re I don't remember the exact number, but you know, you had all of those Sarah Marshall monologue mirrors throughout the maze. You had um, there was stuff going on in the saloon windows in that maze. Uh, there was stuff going on, Q line stuff going on. Right. So multiple you, you Q -line did all that as well. Yeah. Wow. Damn, and, man. uh, so 
going to that queue line, um, that's one of the rare times that we had to have uh, outsourcing, but it was a collaboration. Nice. So basically what we did, we had time to shoot all of the action. We had time to shoot the the witch popping up and doing her, her spells. And we had time to shoot the action of the townsfolk walking in with their weapons and looking for the witch and uh, also showing the monsters after they were the townspeople were transformed. Nice. We had time to do all that, but what we did not have time to do was get into the animation of ah. transforming them into the, uh, the monsters. So we um, outsourced that to Dave Love, uh, who's a really talented uh, special effects artist. Nice. And uh, yeah, so that was a collaboration with that, as well as uh, the, the origin sign, the sign on the maze itself. Yeah. Uh, that was another collaboration. They did the visual effects on the conjuring up of the uh, logo. So yeah, those were those two things were one of those rare moments. But yeah, there's there's just a lot going on in that maze. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, but dude, yeah. I mean, God, it it just really brought it all together. It, it, they it wove the story into the queue. It wove the story throughout the maze so well, dude. So kudos. Uh, for everything yeah. that you guys did, man. You guys killed it. You did an excellent job, dude. All right, so uh, before I let you go, I got one final question for you. Uh, there are a lot of home haunters, and uh, you know, especially this year, I'm sure a lot of people will be trying to do their own little home haunts that uh, perhaps would like to cut together a trailer for their events. Uh, do you have any words of advice for them? Uh, I mean, I could probably go on for hours. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, like I was kind of saying before, our operation over at Knotts, it, you know, uh, as far as the size of our team and some of the resources we have to work with, it, it's, it's probably almost right, right along the same lines of, of someone with a home hunt or, you know, a smaller scale. Uh, so I guess the number one thing I would say is it can be done. You know, you, you like right. you, you can get something, especially these days with the technology that's out there with as far as uh, um, the tech that you use to, to shoot these, this stuff, like cameras and the audio capture and all that stuff. Um, and even your, your post production stuff, it's, it's so accessible. Like, totally. you know, you know, someone that has the equipment that you need to, <laughs> you know, it's, it's everyone will know someone it's, if not like literally an iPhone, you know, right. Um, yeah. the, the, these days, the, the video quality on some of this, these phones are just amazing. So, um, yeah, use what you have, you know, um, I would, like I was talking about before, I would uh, kind of focus on not revealing the craziest, uh, uh, biggest monster or whatever, whatever your draw is. You know, keep that shrouded in a little bit of mystery. Nice, you know? yeah. Uh, use use suspense. Uh, use darkness. You know, yeah. Um, that always helps. And um, stay true to stay true to to your maze or your whatever your uh, attraction is. Just stay true to the heart of it and uh, whatever the tone of it is, and it'll be good. You know, I hope that's uh, everything kind of wrapped up. No, yeah, dude. Excellent points, man. Thank you so much. And well, Jared, thanks again for your time, dude. This has been a blast. My pleasure. Thanks yeah, for having man. me. Of course, dude. You guys do great work, and I can't wait to see what else you cook up for us for the next season. Uh, Same I, here. That, yeah, I definitely uh, <laughs> greatly anticipate it, brother. And thank you for your time, yeah. man. Thank you, man. And well, there you have it, folks. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure and tune in to our podcast version, which is a little bit longer. We spend a little bit more time with Jared than we do here on YouTube. So we talk uh, a little bit more about the things that he does on farm. And we also learn a little bit more about these uh, the, the two trailers that we talked about today. And listen, we've only scratched the surface with Jared and his career at Not Scary Farm. Uh, so if you want him back, if you want to learn more, if you have any questions for him, leave him down in the comments and uh, we'll get another episode going. Going. And in fact, uh, let me know what maze trailer has been your favorite from Not Scary Farm down in the comments. And well, that's going to do it for this episode of The Haunt Line. Uh, I do have an announcement to make real quick. Uh, since things are kind of slowing down in the haunt world, 
Uh, we are going to be reducing the frequency of our episodes. I've been doing uh, weekly episodes since April, I think. Uh, so <laughs> it's been a lot of fun, but it's also been a lot of work. So now that haunt season is over, uh, I am going to start slowing down the frequency of the videos to at least uh, at least once a month. But the goal here for me is to release a video uh, every two weeks. So it's not going to be weekly anymore, but we're still going to be releasing content because I still have a lot of interviews to get through that I've recorded uh, throughout the haunt season. We've got behind the scenes interviews. We've got performer interviews and we've got a couple of uh, fun past haunt reviews that I'm going to be uploading as well. So the content will still be coming, although it won't be as frequent anymore on YouTube. And this is also going to free me up to uh, work on the podcast because I have a lot of podcasts for season two of The Haunt Line. And I want to be sure to release those as soon as possible so you all can enjoy them too. For the latest Haunt updates and updates on the show, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. You can also visit us on the web for links to all of our stuff. And don't forget to check out our podcast, which is available on all podcasting platforms. And until the next time, thank you for calling The Haunt Line.